I want a two, I want two base man, I want a two, I want two base man, I want a two, I want two base man. Okay. I've rediscovered my sense of humor. Happy Halloween to anybody listening. It is 1031 2020. The year of clear vision. Where it's so obvious what is true and what is false. Not so much. Woo! Uh, today I I'm a jester. I'm a ghost pirate witch jester. Ghost pirate witch jester. Oh, that's hard to say. Ghost pirate witch jester. Ghost pirate witch jester. And I modeled for an art class in a full outfit. Uh, they requested a Halloween costume. Uh, I am not really good at traditional costumes. So I have on my stripy socks, my red leggings, my red uh, tank top, and my purple scarf thingy Mick Jagger. The necklace that I made myself and designed myself, thanks to my friend Anne, who has a glass studio. Thank you, Anne. I made that and my tattoo, which means be yourself no matter what they say. I've got my houseplants behind me, my keyboard, my guitar. So that's me. Uh, my artwork. There's some photo art that I made. Some more art. This is my calendar. I need to make a 2021 calendar. More art of mine right here. My 2021 calendar actually might be this. It's kind of dirty. I got to clean that off. I want to take a good photo of this and then have this printed onto a calendar. I made this. There's me as a three-year-old. <laughs> One of those photos is me as a three-year-old. So I like to do a lot of selfies, uh, self-portraits. I do really good self-portraits. So there's the inside. This is a sculpture that I made about the treasure within all of us. We all have treasure within us. So I am reminded by the magic of the universe. Uh, right now, a lot of people are angry and scared and stressed for lots of reasons that I won't go into because I don't want to talk about that. But I just want to say, I think it was Einstein who said imagination is more important than knowledge or something like that because he was good. Einstein was good at daydreaming and coming up with new ideas. So I really want to applaud the creative artists and musicians and daydreamers of the world um, because we need that right now more than ever. We need the ability to use our imagination to help ourselves feel good and have joy and have fun and joy and creativity. So my artwork is partly um, a dedication to the love of nature and the love of creativity and the love of playfulness and the love of fun. So what does it say? Nightmares and dreamscapes. Nightmares and dreamscapes. So there you go. SK, the treasure within. So let me dedicate this video to I've got my weird makeup on, um, which is starting to wear off. So um, I had my creative writing group today. First, um, I modeled for an art class for three hours in my Halloween outfit. And I have this by my side. This is like the only toy I think that I saved from my childhood. Apparently, my parents bought me this. I don't know if it still squeaks. Oh, my God, it still squeaks. That's amazing it still squeaks because I was born in 1968. So this little thingy, Mick Jagger, is probably like from 1970 or 71. It's really old. So it's like an antique. So it's like, it still squeaks. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I kept that from my childhood. Okay. So I had my creative writing group today. And it was um, good because, and what was funny is that I've been in a really grumpy mood lately and my creative writing friends are usually the more, uh, they write fiction and uh, like more like stories and novel type things. And, and they, they um, observe and um, we sit in a park and write and they usually make observational things and write like fiction type stories. And I usually... Lately, I've been venting anger and just grumpiness about what I think about everything that's happening, uh, the pros and cons of everything. 
Um, and today, for some reason, I was just reminded of being a dreamer. And I was reminded of the idea of the importance of your imagination and the importance of dreams and the importance of playfulness like you have when you're a child. And um, don't underestimate, you know, it's not shallow to have fun and feel joy. It's, it's actually quite important uh, for our mental health and our survival um, to experience a certain amount of fun, playfulness, and joy and laughter. Um, and I had fun modeling for the art class. It was a sudden unexpected job that I received because I guess another model couldn't do it. And I was just so happy to, to say yes, because another thing got canceled. So this kind of replaced that. So thank you so much to the person who gave me the shift. And I was able to pose from home and wear my costume and it was really fun and um i'm not really that great at coming up with traditional costumes you know instead of thinking i'm going to be a witch or something so i i'm like i'm wearing my jester hat with bells on it and i'm kind of a uh a witch ghost jester what did i say pirate <laughs> Because I kind of relate to the idea of being kind of a rebel, but um, but in a good way. I don't want to be a bad rebel. I want to be a good rebel. So, okay. A rebel that makes the world a better place, not a rebel that, that does anything harmful. Okay. So there's me playing my harmonica, which I don't really know how to play, and that's fine. I know how to play keyboard, but not harmonica. Um, I just make it up as I go. I'm very improvisational. So we had creative writing class today, and it's not really a class. It's an uh, open session that we've got. I've been writing with these people for eight years. And I wanted to talk about um, Mount St. Helens and nature and how scientists thought when the um, volcano blew that it would take about two years for the ecosystem to come back. And what actually happened is within six months, within six months of the volcano exploding in Mount St. Helens in, I think, 1980. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Um, the ecosystem started coming back because within six months, the fungus started growing. And then because of the fungus, little insects came and ate the fungus. And then little birds came and ate the insects. And then little birds pooped. And fertilize the soil and then little plants were growing and then more animals and plants and so and so on and so on and so the ecosystem started building and not only were scientists surprised that the ecosystem came back so soon scientists were also surprised by the fact that it was a new ecosystem that was different that animals and plants were different than before the volcano erupted so it was a surprise to the scientists how quickly the ecosystem came back and the biodiversity was a surprise to them. So because they predicted that it would take two years for the ecosystem to come back and they were surprised. And so I'm just using this as an example of the fact that nature is not 100% predictable. And so the resilience of nature and the ecosystem is pretty amazing. And the resilience of human beings and our bodies and our minds and our hearts and our souls is pretty amazing. And I think that creativity and play and fun and neuroplasticity and thinking of the universe like quantum physicists do that things are flexible and some things are hard cold facts which people argue about some scientists say one thing some scientists say another thing i'm not going to say what i think anybody should believe i'm just bringing up the point that some scientists say something some scientists say something else and then people debate about what's true and what's false um, and then other scientists acknowledge that sometimes things, new things are discovered and there's surprises and there's neuroplasticity and flexibility and quantum physicists talk about the flexibility of the universe. So that makes me think about uh, people who create, people who make art and music and write poetry. And today, where is it? My creative writing class, we made up words. My friends and I, I'll read you what I wrote today in my creative writing class. And for those of you who don't know, my name is Shannon Kringen. I go by Goddess Kring. I'm an artist and an art model. 
Uh, I'm an improvisational, intuitive, uh, free thinking kind of person. I created my own career over 20 years ago as an art model, and I also work with medical students, and it's a long story, but I've created my own career from that. Accidentally, I fell into it, and I just, my life is just an improvisational, creative experiment. There it is. I'm not married. I don't have any kids. I'm an only child. I'm a left-handed earth monkey, only child with no kids. I have a cat and a lot of houseplants, and I have a boyfriend. Um although it's a bit rocky with him at times. And so I don't really have a traditional relationship. I don't know where that's going, but whatever, I'm making it up as I go. I'm trying to learn how to love myself. Um, I still don't really love myself. I'm afraid it's narcissistic to love myself. I'm trying to figure out how do you love yourself without thinking that it's selfish and narcissistic? Because if you really love yourself, you're not being a jerk to other people. You're truly just respecting yourself as much as you would respect another person. Uh, and you treat yourself as well as you would treat a, a three-year-old little kid who needs love and support. Um, so this is what I wrote, and I wanted to talk about my spirituality as well. Science and spirituality and nature and health. Um, this is what I wrote in my creative writing group today. Halloween feels like a fresh beginning. Uh, posed for art class in Halloween-ish costume, red leggings, tank top. Sparkly purple scarf around my waist, ghosty face paint, jester hat with bells, and striped black and white socks. Excited for my new mattress arriving tomorrow. My back actually went into spasm a few days ago, and I had to literally lie down for almost two days and not really do much because I had really painful back spasm. So I'm getting a, a firmer mattress. I've had the same old mattress for 10 years, so I'm excited that I found a sale. I found a mattress that was half price on sale, uh, free delivery. So I'm happy it's going to get delivered. I'm going to keep my old mattress and hide it in the corner for if I ever have a guest come over and they, then they can sleep on my old mattress on my living room floor. Um, so excited for my new mattress arriving tomorrow. Fresh, firm foam to sleep and manifest dreams upon. Uh, grateful for creative writing friends in person and online. Um, every day alive, back muscles, relaxing out of spasm. Um, thankful for sunshine, barefoot walks upon the earth, improving the viscosity of the blood and reduce inflammation in the body, soothing to the mind and heart and soul. Back in tune with dreams and imagination, sculpting with thought. Back in tune with dreams and imagination and sculpting with thought. A breath of fresh ideas. Clear as marbles in a jar in the sunlight. So I was just thinking about the beauty of the sunshine and the beauty of plants and animals and how the sun shines through the leaves on my house plants and my cat's fur. I have an orange fluffy cat. And I'm just enjoying the beauty of nature right now. Um, and then my friends and I made up three words. Um, I made up the word opal shrunk, meaning seeing beyond the ordinary. The idea of neuroplasticity, the idea of quantum physics, things being not quite what they seem, things being flexible, not set in stone necessarily. Uh, so opal shrunk, that's my word that I made up um, because my friend requested um, that all three of us, Purple Mark, my wizard friend, Purple Mark, he's very famous in Seattle, you might know him. Purple Mark said, make up some words, everybody. Opal shrunk, I love opals. And I like the idea of going to a head shrinker <laughs> and like, you know, um, lessening your neurotic tendencies and improving your brain. Although I, maybe it should be called brain expanding, maybe not brain shrinking, but I like the, the name Opal Shrunk, Seeing Beyond the Ordinary. And then my other friend made up um, Distrapped, Distracted and Trapped. The words Distracted and Trapped combined, Distrapped. So you're trapped in the distraction. If you're trapped in the distraction of something, and then my other friend made up all close. 
like alone and close. So we're all close. We're close. We're, we're alone, you know, we're still close. The challenge of this current time we're in where we're seeing each other less often in person and spending more time on our uh, cameras on, you know, computers and cameras and screens and all of that jazz. So all close, opal shrunk, and distract. Those are three new words that my friend and I has made up. So there it is. So there it is for creative writing. I'm in a much better mood. I've got my computer friend coming over. I'm going to walk barefoot on the earth for at least 20 minutes. I'm doing this for just my mental and physical well-being. It makes me feel good. Um, so I just wanted to say hi to people. And uh, I've been going through a lot of anger and fear. And I have a lot of opinions that are controversial, which I will not share on this video because I want this video uh, to be able to be shared widely. So I'm going to put this on every website that I'm allowed to put it on. And um, I have other controversial shot, uh, thoughts and feelings and ideas that I sometimes share. But this video is not going to be a controversial one. This is going to be a more uh, simple, friendly, positive um Although it might be a little radical these days to actually enjoy, you know, if you actually enjoy your life and savor the sunlight and enjoy being with your plants and your animals and the fresh air and getting some exercise, maybe that is radical because it's true. A lot of people are very stressed out and focused on the certain things that are happening. I'm not even going to say the words, but you know what I'm talking about, like the certain uh, powerful events that are taking place that are taking up most of our time and energy these days because we all want to feel um, protected and um, healthy. So my way of, of um, feeling good in my body is to spend time in nature, to listen to music, to write poetry, to make my art, to take photographs, to draw with a pastels. Here's an abstract design that I made. That's Winsong Spiral Drive. Uh, I love to create visual art. I love to be with my kitty. And I love to walk in nature and appreciate the smell of the plants and animals. Uh, I recently went somewhere where they had alpacas and I was acknowledging the smell. Some people might think it sounds weird, but I I've never lived on a farm, but there's farmers in my family from Norway and North or South Dakota. And part of me feels like I belong on a farm. When I smell like goats and pigs and cows and chickens and alpacas uh, and foxes and skunks and red maned wolves and all the different animals, even like uh, peacocks and seagulls and penguins and hippos and elephants and horses and turkeys and all the different animals. What's the one called? There's some, some animals are really smelly and they smell kind of skunky. And I noticed the alpacas have a kind of a, they smell kind of like a, a lamb and they have that nice lamby smell. And so I like the smell of the animals more than I like the smell of human perfume and human uh, people that spray, you know, scents everywhere that are artificial. I'm not really a big fan of that. I burned some Nag Champa incense from India, which I really like, but I generally like just the fresh air coming in. And I really like the smell of different animals. And I know that sounds kind of funny because a lot of people think it's really stinky in a bad way. But I like the smell of nature and I like the smell, the diversity of different smells of animals. I'm also fascinated by how different people smell. And I'm not talking about perfume or deodorant. I'm talking about just natural human people um, have smell, pheromones, smells. And so the guy that I'm dating smells very good to me. And when I'm in the guy that I'm dating's um, garage, it reminds me of my step grandpa who passed away. Rest in peace, Grandpa Russ. And I really loved Grandpa Russ, and when I go to the garage, it smells so much like my grandpa's Russ's garage from my childhood. It brings me right back to being in San Diego in 1976 and smelling the garage of my grandfather, who I got along with really well, my step-grandpa. My real grandpa passed away. I never met him, 
didn't know that. But when I was nine, I found out he's your step grandpa, not your real grandpa. But I loved him and I thought he was my real grandpa, even if he wasn't my blood grandpa, my DNA grandpa, who I never met. So it's amazing the power of smell, the power of scent, the power of how something will smell. If you know, if you're mom bakes apple pie or you know literally whatever your your um my grandma used to make tamales my grandma jody in san diego used to make tamales and she was taught uh, by real mexican people in san diego that she was friends with on how to make real authentic mexican food and so when i smell really good mexican food i think about my childhood in san diego um, and i have really happy memories um of of mexican food and culture in san diego and growing up with um the music of mexico and the food of mexico and mariachi bands and really good mexican restaurants in san diego and my grandma cooking so the smell of things can bring up uh, happiness or sadness all different kinds of emotions so just wanted to share that okay so that's it for now this is shannon kring and goddess kring in seattle i hope you're doing well i'm in a much better mood uh, I'm going to go for a walk in the sunshine and ground myself barefoot for just to calm myself. And my friend's coming over and we're going to fix my computer. And, you know, I sound autistic, don't I? I think I'm autistic. I think that I'm autistic because I've been listening to high functioning autistic uh, channels online of people who are, make their own videos and talk about their autism. And I think that I am autistic. I've never been diagnosed. I'm on a waiting list for that. I don't know if it will help me or not. I'm not saying this to, to label myself or say I'm a victim of anything. I just think that my brain is different and I'm interested in different things than other people. And I'm really interested in talking about how things smell, synesthesia. When I hear music, I see shapes in my head. I see textures. I make, con I connect the dots in my own way. And I do artwork in a certain way. I mean, I do, I just make this up as I go. I have no idea when I draw these kind of shapes, I have no idea what I'm going to draw. Um, I just make a mark and then I respond to what I see. And then I pick a color that will go next to the other color. And then I just pick colors that I think look good together. And I make it up as I go and it's totally improvisational and there's no way I could ever plan it. The same thing when I use a camera and I go for a walk and I take photographs, I just respond to the light and I see water droplets on leaves and I take photos. And so the way I do my art is just total improv. So I would say if I'm autistic, my special interests are my artwork, um, my sensuality in terms of enjoying the way things smell and wanting to just share that insight with somebody. Next video, I might talk about my spirituality and how I don't believe in God. I'm not an atheist, but I also don't believe in God, like a man in the sky or a man or a woman in the sky that humans made up. Um, but I do believe in nature and I do believe in uh, physics and science. Physics and science and nature is spirituality to me. So I don't choose between one or the other. Um, but I'll talk more about that later. So thank you for listening. This is Shannon Kringen in Seattle. My website is shannonkringen.com. Uh, I'm all over the internet. If you just search Shannon Kringen or Goddess Kring, you'll find me on many websites. Uh, I write in different blogs. I've done music and poetry and visual art. I'm a fan of free culture. You can publish any of my photos free under a Creative Commons license on my Flickr. Over 6,000 photos there now, I think. Uh, I'm all over the place, so I love to share. I love to share my work, my creativity with people. Hope to inspire you to create whatever you want. Um, there's a cute squirrel at my window that my cat is enjoying looking at. That's cute. Okay, okay. Have a nice day. Bye for now. Woo! Another video later. Bye.